from retail products to cities and pretty much everything in between. Dr. Brandon Gein is a global leader in design. His work is widely recognized and respected for its important role in promoting the value of design-led innovation to business, industry, academia, government and society at large. As the current world design capital, Cape Town recently hosted Dr. Gein and this is our conversation. For you, what is the most exciting thing happening in the world of design right now? The thing that I'm most excited about is the fact that corporates are getting design. Governments are slowly getting design as well. And the, the big change or the big shift is in the service sector. So it's a big chunk um, of, of a contributor to our GDP. And the service sector is, are starting to understand, wow, we, what we do is design. We're designing services. And if we can actually design better services, we're going to be more competitive. We're going to make more money. So therefore, hmm, we should actually engage designers to help us you know, in this space. So I hope that you, you will have government leaders thinking, wow, you know, we should look at design very carefully as well in the mm. way that we design policy and the way that we actually structure government. And that's where the big change, I hope. Mm. Um, when we were getting ready before this, you said, hey, we can talk about anything, anything between designing a product and designing a country. Well, I think it's even broader than that. Um, design is so difficult to define. Um, when I talk about design, people normally think about fashion. And when I sort of draw them back to the fact that every product um, that we use as consumers have been designed by someone, whether that be a toothbrush, uh, whether that be your watch or your mobile phone or your motor car uh, or anything that you interact with as a human being has actually been touched by someone, it's been thought of, it's been created, it's been imagined and that's the design process. If you zoom out a little and you say well if that same process can be applied to um, society or a country or even the planet at its highest level that's where it starts to get quite interesting and that's essentially what we, we we're trying to, to do. You're based in Sydney Australia right. you've been spending a lot of time in in Cape Town recently what's been bringing you back and forth? Well um, <laughs> Cape Town has uh, has been designated the the world design capital uh, for 2014 uh, this uh, this is a designation that is handed out by ICSID, the, the World Organization for Industrial Design, uh, every two years. Uh, the first city was uh, Torino uh, in uh, 2008. Uh, 2010 it was uh, Seoul. 2012 it was handed to Helsinki. Uh, and uh, this beautiful city of Cape Town uh, was designated the World Design Capital in, uh, in 2014. How did we attract that title? What makes us the World Design Capital? When you look at Cape Town, um, not only as a, a as a beautiful aesthetic city, it's it's stunning. It's got a beautiful surrounding, and um, uh, as a tourist attraction, more so about the potential that design has on this city, whether it be from a social perspective, whether it be from government actually investing in design and design thinking to actually improve society and looking at how uh, the potential of design to improve uh, government policy for example. So all of this went into the bid document, um, a lot of work that, was, uh, that, was, that, that went into that process and Cape Town uh, was, was the city that sort of jumped up um, so far more than all the other cities that were bidding at the time. When we think of design, is design discovered or is it created? Wow, that's a, that's, again, that's a, that's a fascinating question. I mean, it depends how you look at it. Um, uh, it you know, <laughs> you start delving into the cosmos and say, I mean, everything on our planet has been designed. And if you look at, if you look at the, the built environment, which is the buildings and the products and the manufactured things that we as human beings have created, they've all been designed. But if you do then delve onto the natural side of plants and trees and animals and evolution, I mean, that has also been designed. Now the question is, who was the designer? <laughs> How do you evaluate good design? Whether you look at it from an environmental perspective or from a, a safety perspective or from a, an aesthetic perspective or from a functionality perspective, they're all different ways of looking at what good design is. And because design is so incredibly broad, you, you know, on one hand you you're trying to look at what good design is in the context of a mobile phone, to a toaster, to a kettle, to a motor car, uh, to a building, to an interior. 
uh, it is extremely different. So what I, my, 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 it's the underpinnings of my thesis was really to try and delve into that, dive as deep as I possibly could to try and answer that question and come up with a, a universal model that can be applied to anything from a, a medical product to a, a toaster to a, a, to a motor car. What is, to your mind, the, the role of design for our most pressing issues? I think that um, the world right now is, is, is desperate for, for alternative solutions. There's the question of global warming, whether we believe that or not. There's a question of migration because of um, people fleeing from different countries for whatever, whatever reason, and we've got an issue with that in Australia at the moment with um, illegal immigrants trying to get into the country. There's a global economy. You know, uh, we, we know that we've just gone through a period of, of uh, a global financial crisis. I don't think we're anywhere near at the end of that. Um, so there's all these factors that, if you look at it from an economic point of view, from a, a social point of view, and from an environmental point of view, and, and many others as well, that are desperately crying out for different thinking, a mm. different approach. How do, we, how do we actually turn the whole thing around and just try and think differently? It's been said that you can't solve problems grounded in the same thinking which gave birth to those problems. So when it comes to thinking differently, we need to, I would assume, think presuppositionally. What are the presuppositions that design is questioning now? It's gone to this area of sort of looking at manufactured product, experience. I think it's sort of climbing right up that, 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 that value chain now and actually being much more about getting into people's minds about being responsible consumers, looking at the fact that I don't just want to buy a product and use it for a year or two and then chuck it away. I actually mm -hmm. want to. I'm, I'm, I'm much more engaged in the brand. I'm much more engaged in what the product means. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there's there's an incredible amount of scope for how designers can actually add value, not only in the commercial sense, um, but now that the next frontier is uh, this, this this area of society and and government and designing a better world, which yeah. is the, the ultimate utopia. What drives your, your passion and your fascination with, with design? My very first lecture um, when I studied industrial design, uh, um, our professor got up there, who is still one of my, my mentors, um, said that from this day on, you'll look at the world very differently. And everyone was like, you know, what do you mean? And he, he went on to describe that it's almost like putting a pair of glasses on. Once you put these glasses on, you cannot take them off because the world, everything just opens up. You, you question everything. You, 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 you look at things saying, I wonder if there's a better way. But to answer your question more specifically, I think that my, my view on the world has changed since having kids. We hear constantly about um, what we can do in our life to leave a better life for our kids. And it's kind of like, oh yeah, you know, what can you really do? But I look at my kids and I think, well, I'm, I'm gonna grow old and gray and probably, you know, move on from this world. Is there something that I can do, just even if, even if it's a small little thing that I can do, to try and leave a better legacy for, for them and for their children? And give, given your position and, and the way you are spending your life. If I could walk away with this conversation with just one thing, what should it be? We all have the ability to design something and um, that ability is a gift. It's an absolute gift. It's not something that we should just go, you know, just, just throw it aside. And that, that can be absolutely anything that you do in your life, whether it's the business that you have, or the life that you have, or um, uh, you know, um, the people that you interact with. Every single one of those experiences can be, is designed and can be designed better if you mm. think about it in that context. Brandon, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Um, a gift, uh, a token of our appreciation, Robert Daniel. Uh, a classic contemporary uh, men's apparel. When people connect, the world changes.